Hi, I'm Mike Bain from Christian Voice New Zealand. A young farm worker finds himself outside of a church in a well-to-do part of the city. You know, he gets out of his muddy ute which he's parked in the church's car park amongst the Audis, the Bentleys and all those other top-class European brands. He raises eyebrows as he's dressed in his black singlet, Canterbury shorts and he's wearing his muddy red bands. On entering the church, he can't help but feel everybody steering. He finds a seat near the front. And as he was leaving after the service, he bumped into the pastor who said to him, he says, I don't believe I've seen you in this church before. And the young man said, no, I haven't, but I'd sure like to come back. Well, the pastor said, well, why don't you have a chat with God and be guided on the appropriate style of dress for next Sunday? The following week, the young man returns to the church, dressed exactly like he was the week before. After the service, the pastor approached him and inquired, I, I thought you were going to inquire of the Lord as to what you should wear to church. Well, the young man replied, I did. I said to him, I, I went to this church I'd never been to before. What do you think I should wear? And God's reply to me was, oh, I don't know. I've never been to that church either. Today in New Zealand, we have literally hundreds of churches. They've got different streams, differing theology, traditional, evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, and some would even say cultish. But here's the thing. I would like to challenge anyone to tell me the church is practicing, promoting, and encouraging like the true church described in the book of Acts. I don't know if you remember the old TV series Undercover Boss. Well, if Jesus were to visit a New Zealand church, what would he see? What he would see is the church falsely claiming to represent him and his kingdom. Churches working and acting like a business. Churches who have copied the model from the entertainment sector. Congregations want this, they'll tell you, when your church acts like a cafe before the service with its lattes and long and short blacks. Some churches in New Zealand are a bit like a three-ring circus with their focus on entertainment rather than teaching the Bible. When you go to some churches, when you enter their auditorium, you're met with this gigantic screen, dim lighting to get you into the mood. Then out pops a jester greeting everyone, building up the anticipation of we, yes we, are going to have a great time today. The Lord is going to be in the house today. It's probably true, but it's not this one. Then the music beats out, complete with the worship leader designed to get you moving with their up-tempo music, only to bring you down so the audience can move into a trance-like condition. Then it's time for the star of the show. Who, Jesus? Oh, don't be silly. It's just the pastor. He's here to tell you... Oh, hang on. I should have used the word teach. My mistake. To teach you the word of God. But by the end of his 30-minute three-point dissertation on God and his family... He's encouraging you to pay him and his multitude of support people who work for the church. Then that paid worship leader comes back on stage for another final song to send you off on a high note so you can be buzzing with that soy latte. Now, yes, I may well have described a Pentecostal church, but if, he were to, if, Jesus, but if Jesus were to go to another branch, something more traditional, it's more likely he would find a congregation claiming to be steeped in tradition, but led by an openly gay minister who would be extolling the virtues of love and acceptance. Now, if you think I'm being harsh, think about this. Can you remember the key points from your pastor's last sermon, or are you remembering his funny stories or what was actually happening in his family? You know, was it a dying man to dying man sermon, or was it a bit Bleh. If your church was outlawed, would your pastor be convicted for preaching the truth found in God's word? You know, would Jesus recognize his church today? So what if the boss came back undercover? What do you think would be his first statement? Matthew seven twenty two gives us a, 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 an inclination there. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. My friends, we don't need churches in New Zealand who are competing just for crowd numbers. Every day, and it's with sadness, I receive emails from dispirited people who have left churches. Disillusioned because they're not hearing the word of God. Many have left church years ago and they're seeking. 
not the entertainment, but the heart of true teaching, the heart of worship, the heart of love, the true Jesus. This is the word for the man-pleasing preacher or pastor who cares more about man's applause than God's approval. Sadly, the truth in your church is often neglected. It's watered down to the same volume of milky froth on the coffee you serve after the service, or it's avoided altogether in the hope of not offending members and building a large audience. Judgment is never mentioned. Repentance is never sought. And sin is often excluded. These days, pastors want to build a church rather than break a heart. They want to be politically correct rather than biblically correct. They want to coddle and comfort rather than stir and convict. This leaves people confused and deceived because we teach and we live a form of Christianity void of repentance, void of truth. You know, pastors back when I was a boy, they were pillars of society who supported truth. They didn't oppose it. You know, truth to them was not flexible when it came to absolute. You know, it's solid and unyielding. You know, truth liberates, truth rebuilds, truth restores, truth heals, truth transforms, truth prevails. And here's the thing. You don't change truth, truth changes you. You know, 1 Timothy 1.15 said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Yet many churches avoid words such as sin and repentance, as we've mentioned. But the good news about Christ can only be appreciated with the bad news as the backdrop. There are times when the saints must be feared, and there are times when the, the sinners must be warned. So preaching, witnessing, and teaching are to be done with God-given authority to truly be effective. You know, when we fail to proclaim God's word faithfully, we run the risk of encouraging sin and perverting the words of the living God. When we fail to proclaim God's word faithfully, we run the risk of encouraging sin and perverting the words of the living God. Now, as the church falls deeper into self-reliance and further from the reliance of God, our need for bold leadership has never been greater. You know, change in our nation will only occur when there's a strong conviction of sin, genuine faith, humility and sincere repentance, and that begins in the pulpit. To all you Christians who have left churches, I give you this word of encouragement from Philippians. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. If you want to be found, then take heed, for God is near. In Luke 15, Jesus talks about the shepherd who leaves the 99 in the open country and he goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. And the Bible says, and when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders, goes home, and then there's great rejoicing. So here's my question to any pastor, minister, or church leading. Not when, but have you ever really, truly in your heart, ever done this? And if Jesus was to come to you after an undercover boss episode, what do you think it is that he's going to say to you? Is your church one who professes to speak truthfully and teach the word of Bible? If it's not, it's time for you to abandon the pulpit. And if you don't, then it's time for your church to abandon you. If you're looking for a church, do not accept second best. Expect the best. And remember Jesus said in Matthew 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Thank you for watching. Help us to spread this message by sharing it within your own network. For more information, jump online to our website, christianvoicenewzealand.com.